For a long time, scientists thought the story of the Filipino people was simple and straightforward. They believed that most Filipinos came mainly from a single wave of farmers and sailors who left Taiwan about 4,000 years ago. These people, known as Austronesians, were thought to be the main ancestors of everyone in the islands. The story sounded neat and easy to understand. One migration, one origin, one explanation. But over the last two decades, new discoveries in archaeology and especially in DNA studies have completely overturned this idea. The truth is far more complex, messy, and fascinating. Hidden in the blood of Filipinos today are pieces of a much older world. Before Austronesian farmers ever set foot on these islands, there were dark-skinned hunter-gatherers who had already been living here for more than 50,000 years. Their presence is not just guesswork. It is written into the very DNA of modern Filipinos. And there are more surprises. Modern Filipinos also carry traces of Denisovans, a mysterious human cousin related to Neanderthals, who lived in Asia tens of thousands of years ago but are now extinct. On top of that, scattered in the genome are hints of Polynesian voyagers who crossed the Pacific, Chinese traders who sailed to these islands long before history books began, Arab merchants who moved through Southeast Asia, Spanish conquerors who came with ships and swords, and even faint genetic signals from Siberia, far in the north. Some of these genes don't seem like they should be here at all, and yet they are preserved and still alive today, most strongly in remote mountain villages, forest tribes, and small island communities that have remained isolated for thousands of years. This makes the history of the Philippines anything but simple. Instead of one neat line, it is a tangled story of survival, migration, and even extinction of peoples who vanished from the earth but left echoes in living DNA. So what makes Filipino DNA so unique? Why does it stand out as one of the most complicated genetic mixtures in the world? And what can it reveal about where Filipinos really came from? The story doesn't start with kingdoms, gold, or sailing ships. It begins in silence, deep inside caves where ancient bones whisper the earliest chapters of humanity in the Philippines. In 2007 in northern Luzon, Archaeologist Armand Miharis and his team were working inside Kalau Cave when they found something that looked small and unimportant. A tiny foot bone, just 61 millimeters long. At first glance, it seemed like nothing special, but careful study revealed it belonged to a species of human no one had ever seen before. Scientists named it Homo luzonensis. These ancient humans were small in size, with curved fingers and toes that suggested they were good climbers. Their bones showed a strange mix of traits, some similar to modern humans and others resembling very old human ancestors. The discovery shook the scientific world. It proved that the Philippines was not just a passing stop on the road of human migration, but an actual stage where unique and separate forms of humanity evolved and lived. But Homo luzonensis was not alone. Farther south in Palawan, caves revealed the remains of another early inhabitant known as Taban Man. Found in the 1960s, these skull fragments and jawbones are at least 30,000 years old. They are solid evidence that human beings lived in the Philippines long before recorded history. Together, these discoveries show that the islands were home to multiple groups of humans at different times, some of whom may never have met one another. DNA evidence adds even more to the puzzle. Studies show that modern Filipinos carry Denisovan ancestry, and in some groups it is higher than anywhere else on Earth. Among the Ita and other indigenous peoples of Luzon, Denisovan genes are especially strong. This means that long ago, the ancestors of these groups interbred with Denisovans, leaving behind a legacy that still survives thousands of years later. These ancient genes were not just random. They may have actually helped people adapt, shaping resistance to certain diseases and helping the body adjust to hot, humid climates, or even to survival in high altitudes. So what was life like for these very first Filipinos? They were hunters and gatherers traveling through dense forests, fishing along river mouths and climbing the steep mountains that rise dramatically out of the sea. They crafted tools from stone and bone to hunt deer, wild pigs and even giant animals that are now extinct. In coastal caves, archaeologists have found piles of shells, ancient trash heaps showing that seafood was a huge part of their diet. Around small campfires, they shared meals while storms and typhoons tore across the islands. Survival was never easy. Earthquakes shook the land, and volcanic eruptions could destroy entire communities. Yet these early people adapted again and again, 
They learned to move with the seasons, to know when to fish, when to hunt, when to gather fruits and roots. They carved out a life in one of the most unpredictable landscapes on Earth. Even during the Ice Age, when much of the world was frozen and sea levels were lower, the Philippines was always a scatter of islands, separated by deep ocean trenches. Unlike in other parts of Southeast Asia, where falling sea levels created land bridges, the Philippines remained divided. This forced early humans to become some of the world's first seafarers. They crossed dangerous channels with simple boats long before the invention of large ships. Every crossing left a mark. Some groups stayed on one island, developing their own traditions and dialects. Others spread to many islands, carrying stories and knowledge with them. Over tens of thousands of years, this isolation preserved diversity. That is why even today the Philippines has more than 180 distinct languages, each one a living echo of ancient separations and unique histories. But not all groups survived. The bones of Homo luzonensis tell of a people who once lived, thrived, and disappeared. We don't know why they went extinct. Perhaps they were absorbed into later populations, leaving behind only traces of DNA. Perhaps climate change or competition for food pushed them out. Their disappearance remains a mystery. Still, their very existence reminds us that the Philippines was not settled once but many times, in many layers. Modern Filipinos carry the legacy of these early peoples in their blood, especially among the indigenous groups who live in the mountains and forests, far from the centers of modern life. To stand in Kalau Cave today is to stand in a place where forgotten worlds once existed. The dripping limestone walls, the shafts of light cutting through the darkness, the silence heavy with time. Here, tens of thousands of years ago, real people walked, lived, and died. The story of the Filipino people is not one migration, not one people, but many. It is a deep layered history, woven together across ages. And then about 4,000 years ago, another wave of people arrived, the Austronesians. These were skilled seafarers from Taiwan, who brought with them crops, animals, and polished tools. They were not wandering hunter-gatherers, but farmers with knowledge of rice, taro, and bananas. They were also master sailors, building outrigger canoes that could ride the waves instead of fighting them. Some scientists even call them the Vikings of the Pacific, though they came thousands of years before the Vikings of Europe. The Philippines was their first major staging ground, the place where their great ocean journeys began. Archaeological sites in northern Luzon reveal their arrival through sudden changes. Red-slipped pottery, polished adzes, and shell ornaments that closely match finds from Taiwan. For scientists, these are like fingerprints, proof of the Austronesians' presence. But they did not land on empty islands. They met the descendants of hunter-gatherers who had already been living there for tens of thousands of years. Instead of one group conquering the other, history shows that they mixed. They intermarried, exchanged knowledge, and blended cultures. Modern DNA confirms this. Every Filipino alive today carries two legacies. The deep ancestry of the first hunter-gatherers and the more recent Austronesian imprint. The balance differs. Stronger Austronesian influence in the lowlands and cities, stronger hunter-gatherer roots in the highlands and forests. This blending created something entirely new, a foundation of identity that still shapes the Philippines today. But the islands were not empty. When the Austronesians arrived, they encountered the hunter-gatherers who had been living there for tens of thousands of years. These were people who had adapted to the mountains, rivers, and dense forests of the Philippines. They knew which plants to eat, which animals to hunt, and how to survive in lands often struck by storms and earthquakes. Instead of being completely replaced, these groups mixed with the newcomers. Over time, marriages, exchanges, and shared communities wove the two peoples together. Modern DNA proves this blend. Filipinos carry deep ancestry from those first hunter-gatherers, sometimes called Negritos, alongside the newer Austronesian influence. In the lowlands and growing coastal settlements, Austronesian DNA became stronger, as their farming, trading, and sailing ways dominated. But in the highlands and dense forests, the older DNA remained more visible, preserved in groups who kept to older ways of life. This division can still be seen today, written in both bloodlines and traditions. This mix did not erase cultures. It created something new. It became the base of what would one day be Filipino culture. From the Austronesians came rice farming, advanced seafaring, and the structure of language. From the older peoples came survival skills for forests and mountains, 
spiritual beliefs tied to the land and ancient songs and rituals. Together they shaped a way of life unique to the islands. Language was one of the strongest tools of this transformation. Austronesian speech spread rapidly across the archipelago. Today almost all of the more than 180 Filipino languages trace their roots back to Austronesian tongues, including Tagalog, Cebuano, and Ilocano. Words for rice, pigs, fishing, and boats still carry that history. Even as languages shifted and split into many branches, their shared Austronesian core tied the islands together in ways that remain clear today. The Austronesians themselves were among the greatest sailors the world has ever known. Their boats, carved from wood and powered by sails, were strong enough to cross seas that frightened others. From the Philippines, they spread across Indonesia, Micronesia, and later the far reaches of the Pacific. They reached islands thousands of kilometers apart, navigating by the stars, the waves, and the winds. Yet all of this vast journey began with small communities in the Philippines. Archaeologists have found ornaments like the jade lingling o, a crescent-shaped piece worn as jewelry, in sites across Asia. These objects prove there was a vast network of trade and connection. The ocean was not a barrier for the Austronesians. It was their highway. They moved not just goods, but also ideas, stories, and people. The Philippines stood at the heart of this movement, both a starting point and a crossroads. As generations passed, the Austronesians and the earlier hunter-gatherers mixed so deeply that they became one. Their songs blended, their rituals intertwined, and their myths merged into shared traditions. Fire dances, harvest chants, and river spirits carried traces of both peoples. Over time, this merging created a new identity that was neither purely Austronesian nor purely ancient. It was something distinct. The Filipino identity was slowly being born out of this weaving together. But history did not stop there. More waves of influence came. Traders from China brought porcelain, silk, and metals. Indian merchants arrived with beads, ornaments, and ideas of kingship and religion. Arab traders carried not only spices and cloth, but also faith and family ties. Each group left more than just objects. They left pieces of themselves. Families were formed. Communities shifted and genes quietly blended into the growing mosaic of the islands. Long before Spain, the Philippines was already part of a trade web stretching across Asia and the Pacific. Ancient DNA and artifacts prove this. Chinese ceramics sit buried in soil once walked by island chiefs. Indian beads have been found in graves, worn as treasured ornaments. Arabic words slipped into local languages, carried on the tongues of merchants who came by sea. These influences layered themselves over the Austronesian base, making the culture deeper and more complex. Then in 1565 came the biggest shift of all. Spanish ships appeared on the shores of Cebu. Unlike the traders before them, they did not come simply to exchange goods. They came to conquer, to settle, and to rule. With them came soldiers armed with steel, priests carrying the cross and settlers searching for new lives. They built stone churches that still stand today, towns with cobblestone streets and forts overlooking harbors. They introduced Catholicism, which would grow to become the dominant faith of the islands, reshaping festivals, rituals, and beliefs. The Philippines was tied into a global empire. For the first time, it became a direct link between Asia and the Americas. The Manila galleons crossed the Pacific carrying silk, silver, spices, and people. Soldiers and settlers from Mexico and Spain married Filipinas, creating new bloodlines. Manila became one of the world's first true melting pots. Inside the walled city of Intramuros lived Spanish nobles and friars. In nearby Binondo, Chinese Filipino families thrived as traders. Beyond them, Native communities continued their lives, mixing slowly but surely with all these newcomers. But Spain's rule was not only about connection and growth, it also brought deep suffering. Native communities were forced into labor through systems like the Polo Y Servicios. Heavy taxes drained villages of their resources. Disease carried by ships wiped out whole populations who had no immunity. Rebellions rose and fell, often crushed by Spanish troops. Many communities were broken or lost forever. And yet, resistance also thrived. In the mountains of the Cordillera, the Ifugao, Kalinga, and other groups refused to bow completely to Spanish rule. Their rice terraces, carved into the mountainsides, became symbols of independence and endurance. In far islands, communities held on to older rituals and traditions, blending them only lightly with Catholic customs. These people became guardians of ancient ways, carrying knowledge of farming, ritual, and ancestry that stretched back long before Spain. 
Modern genetic studies reveal that these groups still carry DNA from the oldest migrations. Among them, Denisovan traces are particularly strong, making them living reminders of the first peoples of the Philippines. Their blood holds stories that no written history preserved, proof of survival through ages of change and conquest. The truth becomes clear there was never one origin, never a single neat story. The Filipino identity is a mosaic, layered piece by piece through time. Austronesian voyagers, Negrito peoples with some of the oldest DNA in Asia, Chinese and Arab traders, Spanish and Mexican settlers, and even Denisovan ancestry. All these influences combined into one people. So who are Filipinos? They are not a single beginning, but many. They are a tapestry woven from survival, memory, and change. Each face is a story, and each story is a world, connected to ancestors who walked caves, sailed oceans, built terraces, and stood against empires.